Hey, everybody, good night. I mean, good evening. <laughs> Don't know what I'm saying. It's been a wild week. Hope y'all are doing good. We'll get started here in just a couple minutes since we get some more people in. Hope you're doing good. It's been crazy here. We've been having a lot of rain. Got a lot of cool stuff to talk about tonight. Hope you all are keeping safe and doing good. Just another minute and we'll get started. Hello to everybody that's coming in. All right, tonight's we're going to be talking about Druid School lesson number eight. And tonight we're going to be talking about Sacred Ireland and Celtic Cosmology. But uh, before we get started, I encourage you to go get yourself an adult beverage. Tonight, we've got four shots of uh, uh, Sigma 7 and a whole shit ton of Pepsi. So that's what I've got tonight. Oh, it's very, very cold. Ooh. I left that in the fridge for a while. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Well, what we're going to do is like we usually do at the beginning of things. Before we get started, we're going to get the energy of things kind of just leveled out. So having said that, before we get into tonight's class, we're just going to go ahead, sit back, get our bodies relaxed, and we're going to close our eyes, and then we're going to chant the ah wins three times. Uh... May the blessings of body, mind, and spirit be yours. Well, we've been doing a lot of, of stuff here for the past few weeks. And uh, gearing everything up for those that are new to Druidry. Pagan practice, uh, all those things in general. Magic, uh, spirituality, the whole nine yards. And basically, the, the idea behind these classes, as I'm doing them here on Facebook, um, is two purposes. One is to get you interested excuse me, in things that will take you in whatever direction that you want to go within Druidic practice, and uh, two, to uh, give you the basics. Um, there are other things that later on we will be getting into deeper subjects, but right now you have to have those, those bedrock subjects that you kind of lay everything on, and then you build from there. And so far, we've talked about everything from what druids are, to ogum, to uh, magic, to ritual, which we've done ritual, we've done meditations, we've done ogum readings, we've done all these many different things. But then you have to look at the idea of, and we talked about the gods, um, but now you have to look at the idea of what are the uh, bedrock roots of uh, the Celtic Irish pantheon and how they pertain. Hello, Judy. Good to have you here. Good to have somebody that's a, a friendly face that uh, um, is from, uh, I believe, Australia. It's good to have you here. Hope everything's doing good there. But um, 
so we look at the idea of uh, we've talked about the gods and things like that but now we have to look at the basis for how everything came together and that is the lore and stories of sacred Ireland what makes places and things in Ireland sacred and then we look beyond that to the idea of with uh, with Sacred Ireland, we look at Celtic cosmology in Irish pantheist druidry, meaning the things that pertain to us that uh, kind of work within our framework. There are 125 million different ways that druids practice. There are um, things that are outside of, of Irish pantheist practice. There's a whole bunch, but we're going to kind of keep it tied to the things that are uh, dealing with those that are working within a Irish Celtic construct, dealing with the two a day non, and things like that, so that it can give you the ideas of, um, uh, you know, why we do the things that we do uh, within the contra construct of Irish Celtic Druidry. And here's here's the thing with this. Okay, um, as an example. Uh, one of the one of the differences that I've mentioned um, in past classes between Wicca and Druidry is the idea that Wiccans cast circles, and in Druidry we necessarily don't or do not have to, because of the fact that witchcraft and Wicca tends to cast circles to contain energy or to have a space available to raise energy. Okay. Now, within Druidic practice, um, uh, outside of any magic operations that we may do um, for various reasons, uh, we don't necessarily cast circles because of the fact that casting a circle delineates just a small area of space as sacred. We believe that the entire earth is sacred. Every, every nook and cranny, not just the spot that you're standing in. So... Um, out uh, now, I, I clarify or qualify this by the fact within certain magical operations, uh, one thing that a circle may be used for, even within druidic practice, is a protective vein because there are still malevolent things that can be uh, um, accidentally uh, brought forth during ritual and meditation and spell work, and it's always a good idea to be prepared and ready for uh, events where you may need to contain something that you don't want to get out into the wider world. So as far as that goes with the idea of casting a circle, I would say out of 100% of every, 100% of your, your experience and your practice, you may have 2% of times that you might do that. So, uh, basically every place is sacred okay now having said that every, every place is sacred the universe is sacred all of it the whole nine yards now looking at it in that vein there's also the idea that the irish celts whenever they came to ireland and the uh idea of uh the two day denon came around and it started to influence Celtic society, Irish Celtic society. Um, the idea that, uh, well, as an example, uh, it was believed that Ireland itself was the center of the universe. Okay, so you're looking at this wide, expansive, huge, large, ever-growing, ever-expanding universal edge that is still expanding as we speak, that Ireland is the geographic center of the universe. That's what, uh, now, I, I will qualify this too. Not all uh, Celtic traditions believe that. It just depends on their own cosmology and their own beliefs. But in Irish Celtic Druidry, Ireland was believed to be the geographic center of the universe. Now, you have the idea of the island itself as a a focal point for spirituality the idea that outside of everything else that surrounds it, that this is the place most important for 
um, connecting with the gods and goddesses and, and nature spirits and ancestors and things like that. Um, I believe for pagans, and because of the fact that we are here on this planet, um, I think in general that the entire Earth is uh, the spiritual center, uh, is the center of the universe. There are hundreds of other planets, but because of the fact that we're here and we know that we exist and that we're alive, for us, this is the center of the universe. Nothing else matters beyond what we are on this planet because of the fact that we don't know how many other planets out there are habited by life. I will say this, that I don't believe that we're the only ones that are here in this entire universe. There's got to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of planets out there that are inhabited by some form of life, but we just, and, and you know, the definition of life, you know, um, we don't, we, 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 we define it in certain ways here, but in another planet or another galaxy, life may be a, the, the idea of living as a living entity could be something completely different. We just don't know what that is. So I'm one of those people that believes that the earth is the spiritual center of the universe. And until we make connections with some of these other planets or anybody from these other planets, that for now, Within this, we, you know, within this part of our history, that for right now, this is it. We don't, we don't necessarily know what's out there, so we'll give, we'll give it the thumbs up for this being the spiritual center of the universe. So, how does that affect the way that the Celts were spiritual? Okay, with them seeing everything is sacred, that meant that the trees were sacred, the rocks were sacred. The people were sacred, the animals, every place that was around them was important for their everyday spiritual life. Okay, so this is where we get into the idea of sacred Ireland. Now, we look at uh, Ireland and we see that it is divided into five fifths. And those five fifths are Ulster, Munster, Connacht, Leinster, Meat. And let me see my notes here. Yes. So it's uh, Ulster, Mate, Leinster, Munster, and Connacht. And the Mate is the uh, center that binds all the rest of Ireland together. Okay. So um, you have various sacred places and sacred spaces within those areas, which we're going to talk about later on as we go through the evening. Um, and then you look at the way that Celtic culture expanded over time uh, as the Celts uh, came to Ireland and began to populate it. Um, the idea of the gods, fairies, the ancestors, and things like that started to um, propagate and to grow. It came to the point that everything... Uh, had a spiritual purpose, a ritual purpose. As an example, rivers. There are many rivers, streams, creeks, lakes, and bodies of water inside the island of Ireland itself. Not to mention the fact that it is completely surrounded by, by the ocean. So, one of the things that, uh, you know, within our life cycle, one of the things that we are most in need of is water. Water is a staff of life, not just food. If we have what if we have no water, we cannot survive. So within that vein was given the the, the goddess of streams, rivers, and lakes, which is Boan. And uh, we look at the idea that bodies of water in Ireland had many purposes beyond uh, just being associated with the gods. As an example, uh, people would, uh, when we talked about before, we've talked about the idea of sacrifice and the uh, absurd, absurd Hollywood idea that the Druids um, would pe place people in the Wicker Man and burn them to death. Well, there were some instances in which they did, but that's not the kind of sacrifice that I'm talking about. Uh, as an example, if a chief was going to war with another tribe 
and uh, he wanted to ensure that he was going to be successful in battle against him. He would go to uh, a, a, a deep creek, a deep river, uh, a lake, a well, some kind of body of water, and leave an offering. And most likely, if you're going to battle, that offering was going to be a sword. Um, and you would uh, uh, put the sword into the body of water, asking the gods for uh, success in battle. And that was considered a sacrifice. Um, there were times that uh, that the waters were given um, powers for healing. Um, the waters of life, which the water of life in um, Irish Gaelic is Ishkabaha, which the waters of life is what I'm drinking tonight, which is whiskey. One of the oldest distilled beverages in the world. The oldest non-distilled beverage in the world is mead, which I have in the fridge. Oh, that's so good. So, you realize that uh, the Celts were highly animistic and that they gave everything credence. They gave rocks, trees, animals, the whole nine yards. Everything was given some kind of spiritual significance. Uh, so you have the wells. People would, uh, there would be certain wells that were clear running that might have a tree or a grove of trees around it in which people would uh, take um, pieces of cloth and, uh, and, and place their intent into these pieces of cloth and tie them to the tree and ask the gods for a boon or a favor or to be able to get pregnant or whatever as a form of sympathetic magic. Um, some other places that were uh, highly uh, uh, specialized in their sacredness and added to the, the uh, folklore of Ireland itself are fairy forts, um, any place that had toadstools, toadstool rings, uh, uh, yew groves that were in circular in nature, um, oak groves, and things like that. And then you break down, as an example, um, the idea of the trees, which we talked about in uh, the last um, class and the last oak leaves, is the idea of trees being very much venerated by the Druids and the Celtic peoples as almost uh, they were given the status of people. They believed that trees had feelings, and that they placed them within various castes, from kings to, to, the, to poor people. Well, as an example, you have the cosmology side of sacred groves. So it starts like this. You have a grove of trees. That is a grove. A place that druids met to worship and to do what they did was called a nematon. A nematon was a sacred place that was specifically set aside for druids of various clans and tribes to come together to do things that they needed to do to forward to move forward the gains and goals of their tribe and of their king. So you have that greater uh, uh, area right there. You start with that. You start with the nematon as a place of worship. And then you have Celtic cosmology within the center of that. In the center of the of the grove in the Nematon would be the stone altar set up by the uh, Druid priest. And the stone, the stone altar um, that was set up in the middle was called a cromlech. And a cromlech would be set with the various items and things that would be used for ritual. And they were usually immovable. And like I said, for me, the ritual altar is like your battery. It's the place that keep, keeps you charged, that holds all the energy from all of your rituals and magic. So for the Druids in, the, in, in those times, the cromlet was very important. So you have the grove, you have the nematon in the grove, then you have the uh, cromlet. Then outside of the cromlet, there would be places that were called she mounds. And the she mounds were mounds of uh, burial for the people, 
um, for kings, and uh, the she mounds were believed to be where uh, the uh, she, the the land and she, the the all of the fae creatures and and and, and things would make their way back and forth between the mound itself and this world. The, the she mounds were believed to be gateways or portals from this realm to the other world, which we'll start to talk about that here in just a little bit. Um, so you have that. Uh, you have the fairy forts that are all over Ireland. You have um, the uh, most important place in all of Ireland, which it is this this is the part where it is the basically the center of the universe and that is Tara Hill. Tara Hill sets in the county of Meath on the hill of Usnich and uh, there is the uh, fabled Leofal, the stone of destiny where Ireland's high kings would be crowned. Uh, they would step upon the Leofal stones and if they were uh, worthy to be king they would be crowned. If they were not, the Leofal would cry out and say, you know, just cry out. And if it cried out, then they knew that that was not the uh, uh, person that was meant to be the High King of Ireland. Also, on Samhain, uh, Tara Hill, in um, ancient times and now, that the customs are coming back, the people would be brought to Tara Hill and, be brought, and their animals would be brought between two bale fires as a form of uh, uh, fertility and blessing for the coming new year. And so Usnich and Tara Hill were the most important place in Ireland of all of them. And basically that's where we get the idea of the Axis Mundi. The Axis Mundi, whenever if you look at Celtic symbolism, you see something called the world tree, an upright tree with branches and then roots going into the depths of the earth. The Axis Mundi is the point that goes straight up and down through the planet, through the universe. This is the thing of safety, of balance, of non-movement that can never be changed. In Irish, it is called Bile, B-I-L-E. And it is, it is here that it is believed that the Hill of Tara is the unmoving, unchanging hill of the gods of the people and of the ancestors. Okay. Um... And this is where we also get the idea of the Celtic cosmology of land, sea, and sky. Those are three important things that are uh, uh, very important in, in, to Druidry, not in just Irish Celtic traditions, but in very many, because there it shows division. It shows the land is where we are, our plane of existence. The sea is a metaphor and a, and a placement for the other world. Tirnanog, Tirnambyo. Tirnanog is the other world, the land of the young, the place where you go when you die. Um, and you wait to come back in your next existence. That's where we also get the spiritual property of Anamkara, the oversoul. One life, many incarnations. And so you have the sea, which is the other world, which is uh, breached at Samhain and at other various times by Mananon in his boat Wave Sweeper, and he out, and, and Morgan are the ones that bring souls to the other world after they pass, and they wait to return in their newest incarnation. That you have the sea and then the land. The land is where we live. The land is where we exist from day to day, and then the sky. The sky in the world tree is the leaves, the branches. The gods are considered the leaves and branches of the world tree. We are the trunk. We are what feed the gods. And the, the roots that go into the other world are what sustains us, sustains the tree. That feeds, the, that takes the waters of, of the existence of our ancestors from millions and millions of years past. Are, you know, from, from time immemorial through however long. So it's that cycle of taking nourishment from the ancestors, wisdom, and everything, applying it and strengthening the trunk of the tree, and it gives credence to the powers of the gods to keep 
because the gods, the, 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 the branches and the leaves are what uh, take in the uh, carbon dioxide that we breathe out, that we exhale, and as a byproduct, the tree gives us oxygen. So the tree of life gives us life, and it is the gods and the earth itself that give us life, and it is unmoving, un unchangeable. It can't be changed. So you have that, and this is um, a forerunner. Uh, back in the day, the bards, the phyllae, would tell stories about all of the journeys that they went on um, between tribes, between kings, and these different things. And they were they would talk about the sacred well at Kilkenny, or they would talk about the sacred mountain at Cork, or these various places. These were called dindicentious. D-I-N-D-S-E-N-C-H-A-S, Dindicentious, which are place name stories. So whenever a story was told about Tara Hill, that was a Dindicentious. Um, the various uh, fairy forts, um, other sacred places, because you go from the top of Ireland to the bottom, and there are hundreds of, of wells you have. Uh, Kilkenny, you have uh, Kildare, you have um, uh, the the uh, sacred flame of Bridget that is uh, kept by the Brigadine nuns, and the Brigadine nuns are taking that tradition from the pagans. That I believe that that was handed over from pagan priestesses to the nuns, and it goes through uh, uh, till now. So that's another thing that we do. We have passed tradition from our ancient pagan ways into various things within Catholicism and other monotheistic faiths. So you have all of that. And then you have the idea of um, some of the more important places that we're going to talk about. One of the most important is Newgrange, otherwise known as Brune de Boyne. And Brune de Boyne is the... Uh, one of the largest made mounds in Ireland. If you haven't seen it, look it up. It's called Newgrange. It is beautiful. And this is a barrow cairn that was built thousands of years ago. Um, and within it is a barrow passage that goes for a couple hundred feet. I don't know exactly the exact dimensions. But it is believed to be the um, kind of like a uh, natural uh, kind of like a marker for the winter solstice and it has been shown live they have live cast it they put in cameras in there which I think if you go on YouTube you can find where they place the camera and they'll show it dark and the rays of the Sun will come along on winter solstice on Yule and for about 17 minutes that entire uh, burial passage from the top to the bottom will be lit and at the end of that 17 minutes the solstice is over and the light moves on and it that is also I be believe for me the second most important uh, um, place of note on Ireland because there are uh, no other real uh, places of size that are as sacred other than Tara Hill um, there are uh, stone circles in spots in Ireland. There are wood hinges in Ireland. Nothing like those that are in Britain. Nothing to, on on the st on the uh, scale of say Stonehenge, but yet they are there. And that's because our people, the ancient Celts, were spiritual beings. They believed that everything, every place, was sacred. That's why we have the stories of the underworld, Tyrannum Gael. Um, the land of the of the women. You have Tirnanov, the land of the other young, the place where we go after we die. Now we also have, um, in a lot of Druidic traditions, and I don't know how many of you have seen it, but there is the movie adaptation of Marion Zimmer Bradley's book, um, The Mists of Avalon. So you have Avalonian tradition, that is, uh, you know, the Isle of Apples, Avalon, that whole thing. For Ireland, Avalon is not Avalon. For us, 
It is called the land beyond the ninth wave. And the land beyond the ninth wave is not Avalon. It's called High Brazil, which is H-Y and then B-R-A-S-I-L. And it's basically along the same lines, like for the Welsh, the Welsh have Awen, and for uh, the Irish, we have Imasforosnai, which is I-M-B-A-S-F-O-R-O-S-N-A-I. And it's basically the same, the same concept, which is the idea of spiritual and divine inspiration. So we have that. Um, and you look at how that all ties together. Um, and you can see it, uh, you can see it apparent in the ideas that go with the various festivals, the various holy days, in various things that were done, um, even when there was not anything necessarily so holy going on, that were things that the Druids did normally. Um, it's important to, to note that uh, a lot of things were done on the Druid side, and a lot of things were done on the people side. And so that's where we get some of the tra traditions that we have for Samhain as the idea of divination to speak with those that have gone on to Tirnanog before us. Um, the divinations, the bobbing for apples, um, the leaving of candles in the window, uh, carving of turnips and pumpkins, um, the idea that the Druids would uh, take uh, people and lead them around their villages and 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 uh, areas that they lived and they would make loud noise and and do all these different things to scare off the evil spirits and things like that and to scare off the the banshee and the evil fae the ones that they were afraid of and stuff and it was all tied in to the spirits of place and that's the important thing place geography that's another reason why we have the ogham the ogham was used to delineate spaces and places that were uh, uh, claimed by various clans, tribes, and kings. Later on, as time moved on and things developed, it became more of a writing. It became more of, for us, it became more of something that was usable for divination. Um, so you have the way that all of these things uh, tie together. And... Um, one of the things I think that is very important is how do we tie into this now? Because I'm telling you about this as it was back then, but you have to look at the idea of, you know, that's then, this is now. How do we add this into our spiritual practice? Well, I'm glad you asked, even though you didn't ask. But as an example, it's like, you know, just the idea of of connecting with the ancestors at Salem. Whenever we do ritual and we have the ancestor altar and we hold the dumb supper and we do these things, what we're doing is we are opening portals between this world and Tiernanog. And that's very important because that establishes um, a rapport with the beings that can help us the most. Um, and not just help us in material ways, but I believe that also by connecting with the ancestors, our ancestors and all ancestors, it's where we gain wisdom. And when we gain wisdom, it helps us in our next existence. So in other words, you're, every time that you meditate, every time that you talk to the ancestral dead, every time that you work magic that deals with these things, um, you are preparing your soul and your spirit to move on to the next incarnation. And it gives you a better idea of, um, how do I say it? It gives you a better idea of, of uh, you know, how existence is. So basically, I think the more that you learn through this life about the things such as, you know, uh, the idea that Ireland is the center of the universe and these things, you can apply it here. As an example, for your altar, you can take and cut a, a plank or a tree limb and strip it down and uh, wood burn it with various with various uh, ogham signs and paint and stones. 
and, and other things and put it, put it on its own base and then set it on your altar and use it as a facsimile of the Axis Mundi, the, the ever-moving, non-moving world tree that we are a part of every single day. And that is very important. It, 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 we realize that we are always a part of the world tree. We are the trunk. We are the plane that stands on either, either side and all the way around the trunk of the world tree. And that as we walk on the earth, the roots are below us. And the gods are above us in the branches and the leaves with the birds and the other creatures. It is believed that the birds and the flying creatures take our wishes and our prayers to the gods in the branches and leaves of the tree. Um, and it also gives us inspiration. Um, I think that is one of the things, one of the most important things is that we live our life for, live, you live your life for today, but living your life for today doesn't mean that existence has to be humdrum, boring, and uneventful. So what that means is we take what we learn and we use it. We just don't write it down in a book of shadows or a grimoire and go, that's nice, and go on about our life. That's why I do this um, classes. That's why I run the Order of Standing Oak and have for many years. That's why I've been involved in pagan traditions, witchcraft, uh, ceremonial magic, and other magical paths since the early 90s. Um, and I think it's very important because, you know, it, it, I'm one of those people that's an exper experiential pagan. I believe that you have to live it. Just talking about it and not doing it, I think you're going to be like a car spinning its wheels. The wheels spin, but the car never moves. And, you know, I admit that sometimes my car doesn't move very fast. And sometimes I have to come to a stoplight and you sit there forever, and then you finally move again, but at least the car is moving. And it's one of the things that I always tell people, I may not be the best at how I teach, I may not be the best at how I articulate things, but I'm sincere in how I speak with you and how I work with the community because I gain nothing from this other than the satisfaction of knowing that somebody out there listening might get a little piece of what I'm saying and go, hey, I can understand that. I can I can see what he's talking about. And then they might get in their car and drive it too. Work with it. Work with these things. Learn about the sacred spaces and places in Ireland. All of Ireland is very, very important and very sacred. Um, uh, we are sacred. Our bodies are sacred space. As above, so below. As within, so without. Our outer, what we put to the outer world, is important, but it's also important how we take care and how we build our inner self. So we are sacred space. We are a sacred place. Not just everything that's around me, the apartment and the town that I'm in and the state that I'm in and the country that I'm in, but me, I'm sacred. You're sacred. We're all sacred. A lot of people don't realize that. I think so many people that have um, depression and mental troubles and just some of these things that are bringing them down need to realize that that you are special you are of the gods you are of the stuff of the universe that there, even the smallest molecule of you right now is tied to the very first human being that ever walked on this planet okay so i mean that's like you know carl sagan billions and billions of billions from that very first human period the very first one till now, we are tied to them inextricably. And I'm, I'm tied to you, you're tied to me, everybody, by some little shred of a thread of DNA, by a molecule, we're all tied, period, around the entire planet. Anybody who's living and anybody who's dying, we're all tied. And that just blows my mind because a lot of people don't, you know, they, they have no value of who they are but you are you're somebody that um you may not be important on the world stage you may not be a king queen or some rich billionaire but where you live and and you know uh you know how you are you're important don't let the world bring you down 
because the gods don't are the god that's another thing is like one thing i like about paganism is the fact that as druidic practitioners and the way that we are um we know that if we make sincere efforts to work and to grow with ourselves and with those around us the gods have no condemnation for us we are there is no sin we are not uh, evil all these different things we are human and we are beautiful we are the images of the gods thou art goddess and thou art God and when we finally make that last incarnation the universe will say welcome you are part of us which is us it's not part of it, it is us because everybody that's ever existed at some point or another uh, some longer than others we will eventually go and become a part of the universe and that's why we study and that's why we do these things people go well why do you want to do druidry and all these other things you know when all that happens is when you die you become worm food I don't believe that I believe that what we do now affects us many times down the road and so it's like um, don't shortchange yourself don't you know put yourself down for what you enjoy for one thing but also don't put yourself down for something that can help you you are studying you are learning and you're putting things into practice that you may be young you may be in your teens 19 20 you may be in your middle ages you may be an older older person you could be in your 50s or 60s it doesn't matter what section of life you're in it's the fact that you are pursuing it so when we realize that every place and space is sacred every person and being is sacred we can understand the cosmology that goes with it we can understand the underworld we can understand the stories the dindesenches the place name stories the things that talk about where the gods met at this meadow or um Dogda laid with the Morgan in this forest or whatever those stories and those places are important because they give you a snapshot into a spiritual ideal or an idea that can help expand your knowledge of things that are in the pantheistic vein in the Irish vein um, and stuff like that so uh, it's very important to look at the idea of Ireland and all of its sacred spaces as far as marked and named sacred spaces oh my god I think I counted at one time and I'm not gonna name them all because we would be here forever but there are at least 126 named and recognized places in all the counties of Ireland that are recognized as some kind of uh, important fairy space or uh, grove space, whether it's yews, hawthorns, uh, oaks, and things like that, Bruna Boyne, Tara Hill. But because there are so many places that were villages or places that were off the beaten tra track that are not overly populated and, and, you know, something that did not have a lot of foot traffic over time, they are lesser known. So that takes that number that I just gave you to that little bit to hundreds but then again when you take that and you expand it to all the sacred spaces and places around the world that goes to millions and even ex as an example I know that the fact that you are where you are whatever state country town whatever we're not in Ireland but why we study these things is because it gives us a better worldview and why the Celts and the Druids thought of these things okay so um as an example for you another way to bring it into practice to actually work with it in your hometown in your neighborhood in your city outside of your city i know that there are places where people like to go for walks camping uh forested areas that you just like to go to and camp and, and hike and and walk through those places even though it may say Jones National Forest that's a sacred space that's a place where you can go and you can take your family and you can take some some incense and uh, uh, a mat 
and go to one of these groves and just burn that incense and sit uh, up against a tree and just meditate and listen to the sounds of the trees and talk to the gods. That is sacred space. It's not the idea that we have to make a pilgrimage to Ireland, although I would love to, and I know that many of you would like to as well. But it's the idea that where we are now is an important place and a sacred space. Um, and that's another thing is we also, for those of us that are paganly inclined, we also need to claim and make our homes um, a sacred space. That is the most important place and space that pagans had in Ireland uh, at all times. Not just the groves and things that were around the villages, but within the village self, itself. Each a man's home is his castle. A man's home was very important. One of the biggest places that magic was done was in the home. Magic was done around the hearth around the sharing of food, around the sharing of stories from the father to, to the mother and the children. So claiming your home and making it sacred space, how do you do that? Meditate once a week, um, twice a month with incense and, 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 and whatever that you would like to do to claim it, to make it uh, your designated sacred space. Go into your kitchen and claim your hearth, your place where you prepare meals and prepare a sacred meal of bread, salmon, nuts, berries, and things like that and set a plate out and have a sacred meal. Um, read stories to your family, read stories to your children, um, fairy tales, um, some of the great Irish uh, myths and things like that. Um, it builds, it, it all adds those bricks that makes the house of us spiritually stronger. Holy crap, we've got almost 100 people here. Um, before I go any further, can you guys hear me okay? If you can, give me a thumbs up. If not, I'll uh, adjust the uh, uh, sound a little bit. Whew, today is two things. It is very, very hot here where I'm at. I'm almost ready to turn on the air conditioner. And it is very, very moist, let's put it that way. But, guys, we've had rain for the last six days, and we're going to keep on having it through Sunday. I think we've got like an 80% chance every day. So I'm lucky that I haven't melted away. So give me just a second, and we'll have a drink. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. And what I'm going to do while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go back through all the classes that we've done live. Um, I did a video where we talked about a Druid's uh, bookshelf, things that you should get uh, or things that you can get to read. Well, I think what I need to do is kind of go through all the classes that we've done in the past. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write book lists, short ones, five or six books, nothing overly daunting, that will give you some ideas of things that you can look into that talk about Celtic cosmology, that talk about the ideas of Ireland as the center of the universe, the idea of the land beyond the ninth wave, um, the gods and their functions uh, in, the, in the overworld, uh, this world and the underworld, that whole kind of thing. Uh, just as something that will uh, help you guys um, kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about because um, it's just good to have something to kind of back it up. And I'll put a bibliography of, of a, a few examples of some of the things I'm talking about as well. Ah, thank you for the love. I appreciate that. Holy cow, we're getting close. Yeah, we're sticking at right around 80. Okay, all right. That is awesome. It's just glad to have people hanging out with me on a Thursday night. And we're going to keep doing this until the wheels fall off. We're going to have classes. Um, until things get back to normal. This is just a way for me to communicate with you um, out there and also to, because of the fact that I'm a Druid priest, I kind of like to be in a mode of service. So we're, that's what we're going to do. Um, speaking of which, uh, if you're out there, we are doing something new, which I've started in the last week. Oh, excuse me, pardon me. 
And what that is, is people have asked me if there are, as if, if there is anything that goes a little bit deeper than what we are um, discussing on the classes. And yes, there is, and that has started this week, and we're going to be moving forward to the foreseeable future until it's completely finished. And what that is, is we are um, uh, putting out uh, the Lore Keeper course. The Lore Keeper course was uh, constructed and innovative by a uh, Celtic Reconstructionist Druid by the name of Alexei Kondryatov, the author of The Apple Branch. One of my favorite books. I mean, this is one book that I highly recommend that anybody get for your library when it comes to working with uh, Irish Celtic magic uh, symbolism, working with the, with, the, with the festivals of the year and things like that. And this is something that is basically on the, uh, the premise of Celtic studies. Um, it is kind of a non-denominational, it's a Celtic Reconstructionist Druidic take on three tracks, history, language, and reconstruction, or bringing all of the things together that make uh, Celtic Reconstructionism, Irish Paganism, and Druidry what, that, what it is. And this is a real course. Um, there are anywhere from 15 to 20 different lessons in each track. And at various points in each track, there are um, uh, uh, worksheets to fill out with uh, questions for uh, multi. I think there's some that are multiple choice questions and the other parts are um, uh, essay. And what we're doing with this is I am taking this in, down and putting it into an audio video format. And what that means is I'm recording it, I'm putting it into a video form, and then I'm putting it on my YouTube channel. And what I want to put out there to you is if you would be interested in taking the Lore Keeper course, A, it's free, B, it's at your ledger, there is no time period, there is no, um, there is no timeline. And this is going to be done over time. It's going to take a while. Um, but that's fine. Everybody's got time. Um, you know, what have you. So it's like it's not something that's just going to be, you know, out there. And you're going to have to keep doing it. Have to keep doing it. You don't have to do anything. This is just something that I'm putting out there for the people. But we've got the first installment done. It's up on YouTube. And what I suggest is if you're interested in taking the course, then please feel free to message me and when you do just let me know that you're interested and um, if you are interested just uh, message me and give me your email and what that email does is I put your email into the list and whenever I get through um, uh, uh, recording and then uh, running through my uh, Adobe video works I take that and I put that up on YouTube and when it gets done, everybody that's in that lore keeper list, for those that want to take the course, will get those videos. And then when it comes up time for um, the worksheets, I'll make those up, put it together, and then send it out to the to the group of people that are taking it. And you guys can fill those out. And the thing is, one thing, the reason why I think the lore keeper course is so important, is for people that want to go a little bit deeper one and for two I think going a little bit a little bit further into Celtic studies can help us on our path whether it be the Druid path the Ovate or the Bard because then we get to see a little bit further we get to understand a little bit more and um, it, 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 it's it's a good round it's a good rounding out of our practice um, and there are people one thing I'm, I'm very glad for is Druids are inquisitive. We like to study. I love to study. I have so many books that I'm reading right now. Um, I do meditation weekly. There's various rituals and meditations that I do uh, at various times during the month. We have our sacred days, such as what we're going to be doing, and I'm announcing it now on Midsummer. We are going to do a meditation honoring the spirit of fire because it's the longest day the sun will be with us the longest at that time 
and like the Beltane ritual that I went and did this last time, I'm not going to do a full ritual because even with my air conditioner at full blast, I almost passed out because this place sucks. And so it's we're not going to do a ritual. What we will do is we will do a meditation based around the spirit of fire, and it's going to be very cool. I, I, I love to meditate. I don't know about you. And for those of you that don't know how to meditate, it's not hard. All you got to do is close your eyes, turn off the phone, and just listen and let yourself relax and just go through it. And I think it's going to be very cool. It's going to be massively inter interesting. And that's going to be for uh, uh, June 21st, which is the uh, summer solstice. But back to the Lore Keepers course. So we've got that coming up. And I have the first installment. So if you are um, interested, catch me here on Facebook. Message me. Give me your email. And I will mail you that first installment so you can see what I'm talking about. And then after that, next week we're going to have the first track. The three tracks are History, Language, and Reconstruction. So we're going to go through the history first. The very first lesson in the history track are what are Celtic studies and who are the Celts. So we're going to be dealing with that. And then we'll go through that track, and then we'll go through the track on language, and then we'll go through the track on reconstruction. And then at the end of it, there will be uh, one last big uh, questionnaire of questions about the overall uh, course. And then there's going to be a humongous bibliography with all of the good books that you can find out there that will help you to understand what the course is teaching and for yourself to have for your library because I looked through it as I was preparing the first section and there are about 30 books over the next couple of months that I'm going to be adding to my collection. I'm going to almost have to get another bookshelf. But that's cool. I'm always out for that. I am I am down for learning more, and I hope you are too. Also, if you're out there, um, come and join us at Missouri Druid School here on Facebook. We've got a bunch of great people there. We're always putting up new things for people that are interested in the Druid path and all of its various um, uh, forms and, 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 and stylings. Also, um, I'm a person that believes in giving as much as I can to the community. And sometimes with the way situations are going right now with the, with the COVID and so forth, people are getting scared, people are getting worried, people are getting depressed. And I believe in the pastoral side of, of, of priesthood. So having said that, it's like if you are feeling a little bit uptight or sad, if you would like to know a meditation to help calm yourself down, or uh, a ritual or just something get a hold of me message me and we'll come up with whatever needs to be done to help you out we're gonna do this and this last week we did our second installment of oak leaves which is our druidic discussions which we talked about uh, modern druidry and ancient wisdom how you can take the ancient ways and bring them into modern life and that was cool I enjoyed having that conversation that was really neat. So, we are going to be doing our next class and our next Oak Leaves. Oak Leaves, which will be number three, will be this Sunday coming up at 7 p.m. And we're going to talk about the modern Druid movement. The groups, groves, writers, authors, people of all the various traditions around the country and around the world. How, why is Druidry the way it is in the United States? Why is it the way it is in France and in Germany and in England? What are the things that are binding us together? What are the commonalities of modern druids and druidry? Um, uh, we're going to talk about some of the authors. We're going to talk about some of the leaders of the groups and stuff and kind of give you guys an idea of what's out there. You know, a lot of people are working as a solitary, but maybe there's a grove or, grove or a group that's out there that you might want to look into. Well, we're going to talk about them, and there's a good number. Um, so we're going to be talking about that for the next Oak Leaves. And then um, for our next class, our next class, we're going to talk about uh, the idea of uh, the Bardic side of things and with, with the Bardic idea of sacred poetry and Philodect, which is spelled F-I-L-I-D-E-C-H-T. Uh, 
they are the sacred poets. And we're going to talk about how Philodeck as a magical tradition uh, can be implemented uh, in your own personal rituals, your own personal meditations. And we're going to talk about some sacred poems and things like that. And then the next class, uh, which I'm going to prepare for, we're really going to get into it, is we're going to talk about Celtic animism. And that means we're going to talk about all the sacred animals, from the salmon to the boar to the bull. We're going to talk about how they come into Celtic culture, what their significance was in various stories and various mythologies. So we've got a lot coming up. And so, yeah, um, holy crap. Now we are at almost 100. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight. This is so cool. It's finally starting to kind of calm down a little bit. It's not so hot, um, but we've got a lot going. So if you're interested in taking the Lore Keepers course, shoot me a message with your uh, email. If you want to be a part of the community and see what we're doing, the Order of Standing Oak, then you can come check us out at Missouri Druid School here on Facebook. We're going to be doing Oak Leaves on Sunday. And we're going to be doing a new class next Thursday. So we've got a whole lot of stuff going on. And I appreciate you guys. Um, basically, I'm a guy sitting here talking to you for an hour or so online. But I've had people that have messaged me from Belgium. And we've got Judy from Australia. That is so cool. I love her her participation and her you know hanging out with us. That is so awesome. And there are other people from around the world that I've talked to that have been listening to the classes and things and I really appreciate that and the reason why is because I don't see a lot of people really doing this I don't see anybody doing very much teaching um, online you know and, and that's one of the best things that online can be is a tool to help others so having said that and giving you all the information and kind of talk to you a little bit tonight about the sacredness of Ireland and Celtic cosmology what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the energy back down just a little bit and what I want to do before we close things out, we're going to lean back, close our eyes, take three deep breaths, and we're going to chant the Awen. Awen. May the blessings of mind, body, and spirit be yours. I appreciate you guys. I thank you for the thumbs up and the loves. Everybody, keep joining me. We've got a lot more coming on. Um, be safe. Wear your masks. Don't take crap off of nobody. Get a hold of me if you need anything. I'm here for you. Have a great week. And from the altar to the ring, I will see you Sunday night. And I will also see you again next Thursday for our next class. So having said that, I will say I've got pop-ups coming up that won't let me close. I hate that when your pop-up blocker won't block pop-ups. <laughs> Thank you for the love. All right. Have a great night, guys, and I'll see you soon.